everybody, it's Alara. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about cross stitch. Today is Saturday, February the 17th, 2024. And I'm forgetting what I'm saying already. This is a fantastic start. Um, so I last recorded three weeks ago. I had surgery a week or a few days, a handful of days ago. What, 12 days ago now? week ago Thursday. I'm definitely still recovering, but I could not pass up the opportunity to try and record because the husband is at work. The little guy's birthday is today, but he is at his grandma's house having a sleepover. And the two other boys are teenagers and hold up in their rooms. So um, I did get a promise out of the middle son that he will come and help me shuffle things. So, surgery went well. Gallbladder has been evicted. Looking a little like death warmed over again, but that's okay. Um, we're here. <laughs> I will talk about the gory details at the end of the video if you're interested. Um, I do still have kind of a gnarly bruise on the back of my hand from the um, IV. So if you're squeamish at all, just be aware. I'm, I'm okay, it's just from the IV. Um, so yeah, about three weeks. I didn't get a whole lot of stitching done this week. Mostly it was just plain stitching and catching up and sleeping a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm still in some pain. Uh, I was doing really good up until eight days out from surgery. Like every day was like a really great improvement and things like that. But the last couple of days, I feel like I've plateaued and getting kind of board sitting in my chair all day. So I have a follow-up on Tuesday to go in and see how everything's healing. So hopefully it's all going well. Um, but yeah, I, I could not, again, could not, couldn't pass up the opportunity to come on here and babble away for a while. Um, I would like to think that I will come back in a week because I did say that my giveaway will be closed then and we need to do a drawing. Um, so that one, this might be a longer video. Next week might be a shorter video. We'll see. Uh, all right. I do want to, I've been meaning to do shout outs for forever and I keep forgetting. I only have like two. <laughs> my, my floss tube washing time has tanked horribly in the past couple of months. There's definitely more than two that I've been watching, but these are two fairly new floss tubers. Well, one's brand spanking new, like today, and um, and and and. But anyways, other people don't need like a shout out for me as much. <laughs> Nobody needs one, but you know what I mean. Um, so CCL Stitches, Kylene had shouted me out, and I might have talked about her last time. I don't remember. She deserves another one though, because she also hit a thousand subscribers already. So congratulations. That's amazing. Um, but I, if you, if you like Jen, the caffeinated crafters videos and you enjoy my videos, I think you're going to enjoy Kylene a lot too, because like her, her personality just speaks to me, um, on, on a few levels. So she's probably thinking I'm a creeper cause I keep messaging her and commenting on her videos, but, um, so yeah, go check her out. Um, she's, she's a hoot and a, a hoot and a holler. Um, now to, uh, oh, and I do also want to congratulate, uh, Kelly from Kel Stitches. She finally hit her 1000 subscriber mark long overdue, um, a couple of weeks ago now, but again, I'm, I'm behind as always, I'm always a day late and a dollar short. Uh, so huge congratulations, Kelly. Well-deserved. Very glad to see you hit that milestone. Um, I had, I've had several mentions um, over the last few weeks as well. I, I still have a few videos to catch up on as far as those go. Uh, but thank you for anyone who has mentioned me recently. It's very much appreciated. Um, I, I wish I had time to watch everyone's videos all the time. But I mean, we, we know there's a, a slew of people out there. Which brings me to, before I mention this, this last person, 
to say thank you because for coming and spending any amount of time with me because there there are so so many great floss tubers out there that deserve time and attention and for you to choose to come and listen to me babble is still kind of mind-boggling <laughs> now i am only about like uh this this new one new new, new floss tuber brand's making new she's got a whopping two subscribers i was the first one <laughs> okay to be fair she mentioned me in the video but i'm really glad she did because i thoroughly have enjoyed it i'm about 75 percent of the way through and then i got interrupted and i need to, to go back and finish but i thoroughly enjoyed watching what what she has to offer i mean brand new I, she's never done videos before so it's a raw video just like mine was what three years ago almost um, but her name is Carly. Her her channel name right now is Carly Lou. I will link her below. I have a feeling. Now, don't quote me on this. But she, and I think she's the 60 Minute Stitcher on Instagram. Carly, correct me if I'm wrong. I have a feeling that's going to be her channel name when she changes her handle. If she changes her handle. But right now she's Carly Lou. And I will link her below. Um, so again, super spring, like posted the video today. Um, and, and I think she's done a fantastic job for her first video. So go check her out if you need somebody new to watch. Uh, right. I have quite a few projects to show you. I finished all of the ones that I had pulled last video because again, I'm a, I'm a weak a week behind whatever recording. Now I did pull, <coughs> I did have surgery with a cold. It was approved by anesthesia because I wasn't coughing, yada yada, but that's been fun too. So pardon me if I'm sniffling and yakking and ha ha. I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, I pulled four more thinking that I wasn't really going to have an opportunity to record right away. I worked on one and I will tell you the other three and then we'll pull for the rest of the week, which I forgot to total up how many that needs to be, but 3,000? That sounds right. Half of what I should pull. If you've never watched me before, I'm always kind of scatterbrained. Um... Yeah, 3,000. Okay. If you've never watched me before, what I have is lofty goals. 275,000 stitches this year. I'm not going to hit that, which is okay. Had some life changes right after planning and everything at the end of this last year into this year. And, but, but I'm having a ton of fun because what, what that looks like is, um, like, 200 and something starts this year. I have a couple of finishes already. They're little, uh, but a total of like 310, 11, 12, whatever projects to pull from and work on this year. My goal really is to touch every single project that I have, that I own, kitted up, that kind of thing. I started off with, I don't know what, 65 whips, something like that. Um, and I just got, I mean, okay, collecting patterns is part of the hobby, but I wanted to work on all of, all of them and I wanted to start them, even if I never, ever, ever actually get them done. I mean, there are goals for certain things to, to be done, but I wanted to be able to, to touch everything. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we're going to, we're going to have fun trying. I have a giant board, like a really giant board, <laughs> that I cross off things as I hit stitch goals. I drew stitch counts, sort of semi-random numbers to total 275,000 last at the end of the last year to pair up with all of these projects. And as I get those goals done, projects get crossed off. So... Okay. So let's actually, 10 minutes in, get into the stitching. I have notes. I actually made notes, better notes than what I've had previously. <laughs> <coughs> I 
whether I remember to actually tell you what I've written in the notes is another thing. I don't like to edit, but I'm going to edit coughs and sniffles and blow nose blowing things out. I don't have to say that I have an edit, but I don't like editing because I like you to see me and my environment and this is what I do. So I'm going to tell you when I cut something out and what it is and why. Because I can. Uh, what was I going to say? What was I saying? Oh, last video. Last video, I was halfway done with a goal from the video before video. Last video. <laughs> and I, I, I did finish that, obviously. Mm -hmm. Bending over is still kind of an issue. Okay. And that was Canopy Heart. And I will show you mock-ups as I can because I want to. I prefer, I prefer for you to see the mock-up simply because that's I feel like it's a little bit truer to what you would see. Mm. Oh, anyway. When it's stitched up. I have found Pattern Keeper does not like some of the new... 1 through 35 colors. The sort of flesh tones, the brown, like the grays and browns, don't mock up well at all in Pattern Keeper. I'll talk about that later, maybe, if I remember. <laughs> all right, can it be hard? I'm stitching this on 28 count fabric, one over one full cross that has like 10 colors. Because, you know, it was black and white. <laughs> uh, so here's where it was when I first pulled it and then here's where it was when I filmed last and that was after 257 stitches I added a whopping no I'm sorry that was after 100 stitches and then I added another 257 because the goal was 300 I forgot to write down what the goals were. I'm just going to give you what I stitched on. Um, for a total of 357 added. Am I comparing? There we go. There. Put that back up there. And what did I do? Filled in black? I don't know. You tell me. I can't see the picture. <laughs> I forgot to look. <laughs> uh, and this is now... Got 2,001 stitches out of 300,000 stitches for a total of 0.67%. I, I started this with Suki, the brown eyed stitcher, and don't anyone come at me in the comments for filming when I'm still in pain. I, I, trust me, I needed this because I've been sitting in this stupid chair for over a week. <laughs> I wanted to do this. I was going to be in pain whether I was filming or not. You just have to watch my funny faces when I move around. I <laughs> uh, started this with Suki, the brown-eyed stitcher. I think she's a little further on, along than I am. We're both pathetically not far into it. <laughs> um, but yeah, started that with her. And that's going away until next year. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's um, Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by Dakota Detweiler. I think that's actually most of the info now. I'm not, I'm not good at that. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm so, so excited. I didn't think you'd get to see these before they were sent on their merry way. Did it. I got all 10 of these suckers done. <laughs> It's like a look, look, it's like a flip book. <laughs> I am very excited to get these off to where they need to go. I need to have my husband move or help me move stuff and get the shipping stuff out uh, to be able to, to get that in the mail for uh, to go where it needs to go. I am ecstatic that I will never stitch that again. <laughs> I was good for three. 
after that, and yes, I, I'd had part of that pattern, like not necessarily memorized, but like the path to take in the circle was definitely set in stone by the time they were done. So each of those were 1,072. I did three in the last three weeks to get those done. I don't mind saying yes, I will help you out in doing that. I probably, I just won't do it like multiple times or more than two on a small pattern. I knew that I would never like stitch a big pattern more than once, but I was like, oh, oops, sorry, bonk you. Oh, it's fine. It's small. It doesn't matter. It was like stitching it 20 times because it was a mirror image of the, the wreath was a mirror image. So, okay. All right. I don't know. Who was it? I know, I know Jen, I know Jen, Kathleen Crafter, Jen was laughing at me when I pulled this. I was laughing at me when I pulled this because I've talked about this one before. Leap of Faith. This is a kit by Busilla. I chopped it down when I went camping, so I don't exactly remember. Oh, I got a really great tip from my friend Ariana of a suggestion of putting up like a weight sheet or something behind. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> weight sheet behind me. Um, to help with the like oranginess that happens sometimes when I show and hopefully maybe stop blowing things out when it's when I'm showing it close and far away. So I have that on order. I just bought some like super um super cheap curtains off of Amazon. And then we'll just we'll just hang it. We'll just hang it when I need need it. I don't know, maybe we'll just do it like a curtain. Anyway. Fantastic idea. I hope it works. I will explain that at the end. I had a few questions on um, my last video of what that is. So I will talk about that at the end as well. Anyway, back to back to business. Leap of Faith by the, there, Busilla. I love this saying. And I had found, I was complaining about the back stitch, but when I first started this pattern, it was the first time I'd ever dealt with 28 count. That a small, as small of a count as 28 count. It was the first time I'd worked anything over two. And since I started that, I have had quite a bit more experience with both of those. Made a huge difference. Huge. Sorry, I zipped it. Unzipped it, zipped it, and then had to unzip it again. I pulled this, and I think it was 500 was the goal. And I, I wouldn't say I flew through it, but I got it done. I did 520 total. And, yeah. So you can see where, where I was before and what I have added. So I did, and I ironed it to get all the ink out, which I was kicking myself for doing that and later because I had to fudge quite a bit down here in order to get everything to line up correctly once I started um, putting that stuff in. <clears throat> but yeah, this time I had no problems following the chart, getting it on the fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. No problems whatsoever. It was literally just a matter of I wasn't even though this isn't like the beginner pattern section or whatever, I would not recommend this for beginners. Not until you're more comfortable with working over with a small count of fabric, working over two. But yeah, that that's that's definitely not going to be the issue that I thought it was going to be, which is good because yeah, I like it. I'll show you like my plan stitching at the end this time because that's where all the numbers are all right next one is from witchy stitcher this is emotion bottle and i don't remember if i put the picture in here or not i don't think i did i do this every time i have to like fiddle around and find it. Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's right here. I just have to 
switch tabs. Make it big. Thank you. If you're offended by adult language, look away. Just bottle that right up. <laughs> love it. I love it, love it, love it. Because, you know, I don't do that. Ever. <laughs> uh, goal on that one was... 800. Now, y'all, I installed... Okay, I'm going to pull some of these out so I don't have to keep bending over. Is that it? Okay. Whew. I installed Markup, RX, RX, RXP on my tablet. Because Pattern Keeper doesn't play well with certain PDFs. I own... I subscribe. I subscribe to Markup now. I really liked it for PDFs specifically that don't play well with Pattern Keeper. Now, there is one type of PDF that doesn't play well with Pattern Keeper that I have yet to try. That's going to be this coming week, um, which is the group Patterns by uh, Visa, Free Patterns by Visa. She uses... Um, I think she uses pixelstitch.net to chart her patterns and she makes them, they look fantastic even though it's from that program. So I am not going to complain about where they come from, but they don't sync well with Pattern Keeper. You can't search symbols. I'm going to see if Markup will do a better job with that. I, I wasn't real impressed with it from a scanned, <clears throat> excuse me, from a scanned image. Um, I felt like Pattern Keeper was still a better fit simply because it does not recognize, mark Markup does not recognize all of the same symbols together. Sometimes it pulls the wrong symbols, like for highlighting. <coughs> and my brain wasn't liking, like it, it, it even though Pattern Keeper wasn't going to do that either, the fact that it would pull some and not others and pull wrong ones in Markup was was kind of hurting my brain. So I, I will stick with Pattern Keeper for, um, for scanned in pictures so far. I'm, I'm very, I'm a baby user with markup. So I'm people who are like well versed in it are probably like, but if you do this, it will work better. I don't know. Anyways, emotion bottle was eight. Now I had written 846 down, but when I went back into the info, it said I only did 805. Oh, you know what? Did I forget to actually mark those? Maybe I did do 846 and I just didn't actually mark them off. And I will say Pattern Keeper is, is a lot faster at like pulling up patterns. Nope, I didn't mark those. Okay, anyways. So, 805 stitches for a total of 22.5%. And I did a teeny bit, a little bit of back stitching in the, in here, that white, those white lines. And then across the heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had so much fun stitching this. Oh my gosh, so much fun. I did not want to put this one down, but if I want to try and touch all of my projects, that's, it's just going to happen. I, and I really, I really like the color of fabric that that it's a little pinker, pinker, pink, peachier than what's showing up. Hopefully that white curtain will help with that. So yeah, almost 25% already. It's not, obviously it's not big. So, I mean, that's, that's the edge of the pattern right there. So, yeah, that's definitely a pattern that can be finished in a relatively short amount of time, should one actually commit that time to it. I, I, and 
You know, it might make some of you absolutely bonkers to have a pattern that would work up so quickly not done, but I'm having so much fun <laughs> doing all the things right now that I'm, I'm going to, it's not even bugging me. <clears throat> Notes. Where am I at? Okay. Uh, next up is a, another new start. This is a pattern from... Sarah at Total Cross Stitch called Fire and Ice Horses. On, I'm used to finding it this way. This is, it's got 108,000 stitches. So it's a fairly small pattern. It's really not, not that huge. I did not want to go into the pattern. Why did I do that? Mock up. I had a diamond painting like this, have a diamond painting like this, but like they're almost all this detail is completely lost to black. So I'm, I was excited when I saw her chart this up. It's like, I'll just stitch it instead. <clears throat> so, and I pulled that in for, I think it was a thousand stitches. Or something and I did like 1201 it was a lot because it was block blockish stitching do you want to come out okay Watch out. so 1201 stitches in the corner ta-da I am doing this one on this is on 28 count China Ada. I might have found a new source for my Ada in China as well that's cheaper for more, like two more yards of fabric. So we're going to give a new shop a try. Um, <clears throat> this is all of 1.11% of the pattern. It's really, it's not that big. I mean, it's, eh, that's it. That's all the bigger it is. And it looks like it's pretty easy stitching. I'm doing this two over one tent stitch. I decided I wanted this one to go a little faster. I, th I feel like what's going to end up happening. Because I, I kind of bounce back and forth between whether I like tent stitch and whether I don't like tent stitch. I think I've come to terms with how I start my threads and I'm happy with it using tent stitch. That was, that was a big thing for me. <laughs> because you couldn't do... The way I like stitching, okay, if I used a loop start, I would get like all these tiny threads that you couldn't do a loop start with anymore because I'm not good at estimating how much thread I'm going to need for how many stitches, whatever. I found a way that makes me happy and leaves me with one strand of thread that I can use for either one over one or two over one or two over two. Uh, so yeah. Fire and ice horses. Here, let, let me slow down so I can, just in case, I don't know if I need to take, I don't know how well the pictures I took and stuff will. I was stressing about having surgery. <laughs> <clears throat> so, okay, next up, oh, I do need that. Okay. This time around I have stories for some of these projects that, that came up because I don't know what happened. I cut this fabric, these, okay. So this is 16 count lilac, purple, witchel linen. No, Ada, just kidding, Ada. These are all for the stocking gnomes, okay? And I could have swore I went through all of them. I gotta quit leaning over like that. All of them and looked at like the dimensions, how many stitches wide by high and cut them all like big enough to fit all of them. That was not true <laughs> because this one has like a, I don't know, a quarter inch margin for top and bottom. Lord. 
Oh, and a story because, uh, yeah, if you were paying attention and took notes last time, <laughs> this, uh, this was not, this was not part of the plan. What was part of the plan? I was supposed to have done, hang on, I gotta find it. Did I put it away already? I think I put it away already. I'll put a picture of it here. I was supposed to do one of these. The blue one, I think. I did not plan for those well at all. I don't think I looked at the materials list once because I opened it up to start. <laughs> There's not a strand of DMC in the thing. It's all Krynik. It's all beads, which I have none of. Maybe I have some of, but they're in like alligated for other patterns and not ready to be used for that. So I was like, well, that was brilliant. So what I did was I actually reallocated those four patterns to the last four gnomes from <clears throat> from the series the the christmas gnomes that i have Let's see if i can just briefly there we go all these guys so all of these are now going to be done I just randomly assigned, and I did. I went through all of, did I go through all of my papers? No, I don't think I did. That would be crazy. I'm not quite that crazy. Anyways, in my spreadsheet, I, I just noted randomly whatever, put the name of the gnome that I'm going to substitute for those, for those four um, ornaments. And those will go in the, like, want to kit up pile. So, okay, that being said, these <clears throat> are ones that I decided I wanted to try in pat mm -mm, markup instead of pattern keeper. And I was really happy that I did because it was so much easier, like, markup does put grids on top of um, PDF patterns much better than Pattern Keeper does. I did not have to go through and individually size every single grid, blah, 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 like I do for Pattern Keeper. Now these were all in Pattern Keeper, but I actually liked, I actually like working on these types of patterns much better in markup than I do Pattern Keeper. So I will be, I will be putting these into markup as I pull them. So the one that was pulled, did I put him in the pictures? I did it. Was this one, Stocking Gnome. His hat's so fat. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So let me, I really, I need one of those like holder things. Is it gonna throw it at you? Yeah, I really like that's gonna throw it at you. Like the, the little circle things or whatever. Hold that because I need to do I need to do one of these <laughs> just so that you can kind of see because the back stitch is gonna help define that stocking. It really doesn't look like much of anything. So I did how many did I do? Five hundred and twenty-five stitches. I think he was called for five hundred or something, and that not including back back stitch. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because um, markup does show the back stitch still on the pattern because it's basically like a scan of the pattern. Like it uses the actual picture of the pattern instead of converting it. Anyways. <clears throat> so that's uh, 525 stitches out of 2,121. Almost 25% right here. And yeah, I put the post-it, I put a post-it note with a pin because I'm just putting them all back together. And I was like, oh, I should probably leave notes for myself as to what's what, or I'm going to re regret life and hate myself later. Um, <clears throat> okay, next was Birth of a Star. Oh, Schnikes Batman. <clears throat> Witchy Stitcher, Fire Nice Horses. Talking now. Okay, so the only thing I really haven't told you is where the stocking gnomes are from. 
I do like in Pattern Keeper you can pull up the PDF itself. You cannot do that in markup. Four stitch, the number four, stitch.com. It's an Etsy store that I got from, got it from. I don't remember the name of the store. I don't think it was that. I will link it below to the actual Etsy listing. Um, mm, okay, next. Birth of a Star, Max Colors. This is a chart by Heaven and Earth Designs. Artwork is by Rachel Anderson, if I am remembering correctly. Yep, Rachel Anderson. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't realize this. Uh, it has 118,054 stitches of 939. Now, if you've been following me, you know I am not intimidated by a large amount of one color at all. But I was unprepared for that because I was like, oh, I thought that was a little bit more of a mixed background than it is. Because that's like half the pattern. <laughs> it's literally half the pattern. Um, I'm, I didn't, ha I don't, I don't have that. Like, and I was like, oh, the dye lot thing. Because when it's a big block, here, I'll show you. That's the 939 in this pattern. When it's all together like that, the dye lot does matter. Um, if it's if it's mixed in confetti, whatever, I don't care. I don't necessarily care, but I care. Um, after I saw the difference in Dragons of the Sabbat, I was like, eh, yeah, let me try and not have it be five different lots of 939. So I I ordered a cone. A cone of Doom Jr. is what I've dubbed the 939 <laughs> uh, from China. It is rose rosace rosate. I don't R O S R O I'll put it here. <laughs> um that was it's 250 grams, which is the small cones uh from DMC size for like 10 bucks. So if it performs, if it performs at least as well as the DMC Black, which frankly, um, it lists swear words for me quite often, I'll be fine. So <clears throat> rather than start on any of the 939, I opted to start on her. I was going to do my normal uh, left hand upper left hand corner start and I was like no nope, guess I'm starting in the middle so what is this on this is a Wichelt linen uh, 28 count cashel linen antique white I am doing this one over one full cross I don't know why I left hanging threads uh, because I have been finishing off threads why did I leave these Probably, I, you know, I guess it was probably the uh, the edge of the Q-snap and I just didn't feel like moving it afterwards. That's okay. I sh should probably invest in a, a board. I have a board. It's over there. I'm not moving. I'm sorry. We'll see how this works. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. I'm not, like, backlit or anything. You can see her. Look at that. I put... 1,282 stitches in and I was using really long threads. So I'm, I'm wondering, I think it was, no, I think it was like 1,200 that she was called to half and I went 82 over and did I tell you 240,000 ish stitches in the whole thing? And I am at 0 .0, 0, mm, 0 0.0, 0, 0.53% on her. Okay. Stop talking and show it. But yeah, you can see her. So we've got some of her skin coming in. The the line down here is her arm uh, supporting herself on her on the moon or her lap or something. And then, you know, she's got her finger out to the star. And then you can see the outline of her head coming in. So that was really fun to, to be able to have that much that much detail come out with so few stitches. 
So that, that was pretty cool. I, I had a lot of fun on that one too. I don't know how, how do I have this folded? I will fold that and put it away later because that's, that's funky. Okay. Uh, okay, next I worked on uh, Shaman. This is uh, another Heaven and Earth Designs. Art. There's hair. Oh. Artwork is by Lori Prindle. This is a super size max color. Mm. There are approximately 230,000. No, that's wrong. Wrong line. 665,000 stitches in this thing. Because, you know, super size, max color. Or not, I mean, super size. There we go. That's not bad. I love the colors in this thing. Okay. Uh, sadly, this only had a call of like 300 stitches. You were going to be able to see so much difference in this. I basically filled in, I, I tucked in, I had some th hanging threads here. I tucked in those and um, continued filling in this pink because that's pretty much the only thing left on the page ends here. And that's one color, that's all that's left in there. So I just, I tucked in what was hanging and it was like, what, two lines or so before, <laughs> before it was done. Uh, uh, and then it, it's got fuzz on it. And now it's going to go away again. And one of these days I will actually put some decent progress in one of these horse pieces that I have. <sighs> this eye. But, you know, that's okay. That's, that's what's going to have to happen. So that I can touch everything. I'm getting it down to Yeah. Okay, next one I started out I was very excited about, and I still am. This is one of the four, well, this is four seasons from 2x2 two two Stitch Art on Etsy. They are four separate patterns that I'm stitching all together, and you can see them here. I'm trying to throw it at you again, yeah. Okay. Those four. I started with spring. There. Uh, I actually started this in the bottom right hand corner because I wanted as close to a center mm, orange, a close to a center start as I could because I'm going to put borders around them. Now, again, my friend Ariana, she has good ideas. She suggested I do like a border that is like one border, but the top, like a wavy kind of border with like the top half being a spring thing and the bottom half being an autumn thing and the other side being a summer thing. Yeah. Uh, which is very close to what I was going to do. And I may, I may or may not, I gotta sit back for a second. I may or may not do that simply because I, I bought some like prefab borders that I think will work nicely because they're all the same designer. So I think if I just do, you know, four borders around the four, it'll still work nicely. And I'm not sure I'm up for it at this point, which honestly doesn't matter because I don't know when this is going to come back out again. I'm not, I'm not honestly up for a lot of uh, charting to get it to, to work. So this is on 46 count fabric, uh, linen of some sort, mystery linen, because I bought it at uh, an LNS that didn't have labels on it. Or I didn't get a label for it, nor did I note it. <laughs> uh, anyway, 46 count over one, 10 stitch. Yes, because <laughs> it's so cute. I love it so much, you guys. Ah, look at it. Look how tiny it's in my finger. 
I did 400, this is 467 stitches. I'm out of, uh, each one of these has 16, almost 17,000 stitches in it, plus the borders. So this particular one is 2.76% done. Another one that I, honestly, I did not want to, uh, I did not want to stop working on. Let's see if I, how close can I get it? There we go. Uh, yes, I took a leap of, of I'm, I'm uh, counting very, 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 very carefully. <laughs> um, because I, I don't know. I mean, I could probably try and grit it, but frankly, I don't want to count by tens a lot on this fabric. At least not right now. So I didn't. And hopefully, I, hopefully I don't regret it. So far it was our, it was all right up until, you know, when I was done doing it. Uh, so yeah, cross your fingers that that will go smoothly the next time I pull it out. Okay. The next one is way over there. I need like a grabber. <laughs> Uh, this was a start and a UFO. Okay. Because now hear me out. I was on a kick with the tiny stitching for, for a bit. This is sampler 229 also from two by two stitch art. I changed the mock-up color because, um, it's, I wanted to do it with these China silks which were actually very nice to work with, to be honest. There are 10 different shades of orange-yellow in the pack that I got. And not only was the piece of fabric not big enough for two over two, but this is not big enough for two over two, or not enough to do two over two. I have since ordered more thread because it has to be two over two. It's got, it's going to have to be two over two. I tried to this on, I, I, I'm, this was a 32 count piece of fabric that I had. Okay. Hand dyed. So it's even smaller. And I can't grit it. I could grit it. I'm not going to grit it. <laughs> because it's hand dyed. My friction pens won't really work on dyed fabric. They will, but then I'll regret it, especially on a sampler. It's tiny. I think, I think it would have been okay. Hat, mm. It's the blues. It's the blues that make it turn orange. Um, I think it would have been okay if, if I hadn't screwed it up, <laughs> count-wise. It's so small that I am having trouble seeing the threads and counting properly. So I think it was like a perfect storm of things to go wrong for this project. Um, like I said, the detail I think would have ended up being okay. Not fantastic, but okay. Um, the stitches were a little bit bulky for this 32 count. And this particular um, weight of silk, it's not it's not as thick as a DMC thread, but it's not like half the size or anything like that. And I was doing it one over one because it's a sampler. I've, to me, it needs to be a, a full cross kind of deal. And um, yeah, I had a, a whole plan on how to do like a gradient to the... To, and I think it's going to look awesome. So what I want to do is I want to get a piece of fabric that is big enough for two over two for this sucker that is more, mm, less purpley, more blue. And I think I found a shop that has what I want, but it's going to be a minute before I can buy it. So I'm saving this piece for something that can fit two over two someday on it. Uh, and I will frog slowly on that. I will not try to save that, that silk though. It's just kind of shredding. So starting a UFO. I put like 318 stitches in before I was like, this is not going to work. Uh, and then 
I got roto rooted. Didn't stitch for a day and a half because uh, that was rough. <laughs> got the last wedding favor done. No, second to last wedding favor done. And then I started the bald eagle by Cottage Garden Samplings from the Year in the Woods series. I would assume if you're brand spanking new to cross stitch, you may not have seen this, but most of you have because it's been everywhere. Uh, I'm going to have to get creative on these because yours truly is kind of dumb sometimes when it comes to planning. Blah, 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 blah. I got Brandy's um, Be Stitch Me's Woodland Bundle. I failed to think about the fact that this is going to have different uh, floss use the length amounts, different floss amounts, based on the size fabric that you purchase. Size count. And if you're going to do it two over two or one over one or whatever. Uh, I bought the Lugana 28 count. Woodland bundle. You know what the model stitch is on this? 40 count. So we're talking about like the equivalent of a 20 count fabric to a 14 count fabric. Yeah, I don't have enough floss on any of those stinking patterns to do the full pattern with the called for fancy flosses. And I'm not, re I'm not, per the, the dye lot issues on a hand dot, mm -mm. I'm not repurchasing all of them. But I don't have enough. They pretty much all require two skeins. My hair's going back, it's driving me crazy. They pretty much all require two skeins, each of the fancy floss on 28 count, two over two. So I'm having to pick and choose what part of the pattern gets the fancy flosses, which is kind of fun. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. That's that part's kind of fun. Like making that particular decision is it's like, okay, what's, what's going to be fancy. I also in purchasing the 28 count size woodland bundle did not think about the fact that there were not going to be any room at all to separate the pieces. So, like, I have to put three pieces, three of the patterns on its color together. I didn't mean to show you that one yet. I need to unfold one of the ones I hadn't stitched on. Anyways. <laughs> adjustments just had to be a little bit flexible I've pulled two of them I pulled the eagle last time and I pulled the raccoon I think no not did I pull both what else bells I don't remember I don't I think the raccoon I pulled what last night yes yesterday yeah because I worked on it today I pulled it last night uh and I realized that those were both very lucky pulls because they are the ones in the center of the fabric. Because now I have to actually count and figure out where I need to put the outer two patterns on that fabric because I'm not separating them. That part I'm not real thrilled with. But I pulled the center two, and I think what'll happen, I pulled up cottage garden samplings um, layout, and I think if I pull, I have two in the centers of each of their fabrics now. And of the other two that are left, I think if I pull something that's on the outer wings, I may go ahead and swap it for what's in the middle so that I can get a centered start. Oh, Jen's floss tube is ready. I gotta stop talking so I can watch her video. 
Um, so back to what I was saying. I also did not really like look at this, the fabric colors that were called for versus the Woodland Bundle that I got on Lugana. I must have bought this before I had some epiphanies about certain things. Because Lugana is a, has um, a synthetic fabric or a synthetic fiber element to it. It does not take dye as well as like a linen or an Ada that are 100% natural, typically, uh, fibers. Um, so these are a little bit muted. Um, the, the greens were relatively easy to go. Okay. Yeah. That those belong on that. This belongs on that. These to me are very similar as far as uh, what should be put on what this is. I'm assuming this is going to be for winter just because it's a little more blue gray. And this is going to be for the autumn pieces. But the, um, the call fours are definitely like the blue is much more blue. Like here's the, the fox and that's definitely like a heavier gray blue. But again, I think that's, I really think that has to do with Lugana and not with Brandy's dye job. That was just me not thinking about that fact when I ordered it it's still going to look right. It's just not going to be quite as true to the envisioned finished product, product, project <laughs> that these show. Okay. Enough about yapping about it. Let's, let's actually show what I worked on. So bald eagle. I worked on this tail and like, a smidge of the tree under him. Ta-da! And that's, uh, what is that? 832 stitches. I think he was called for 800. But, yeah, yeah. He was fun. These are just blocky enough that it's really easy stitching, even though there's, like, a lot of detail to them. So, Ta -da. But yeah, when I do the other two, I'm going to have to count and decide how much, if I want any space between, or how much space needs to go between. I don't know, Kelly, how much space are you putting between yours? Suki, are you putting yours on the same fabric? I think you are, right? How, how many, which, are you putting space in between? I don't, tell me, if you've done these on the same piece of fabric or like, you know, these... Do you put space be space in between them? And I'm, I'm sure you do. Do you have to? I don't know. I have to make decisions that I wasn't planning on making, okay? <laughs> so. There's that. Let me go ahead and talk about the raccoons since I've got, I've got these both out. Put this away so I don't lose the threads to go with it. So, oh, so what I'm deciding. So the tree trunk is fancy floss and like base the, the background of these feathers and the main body color is the fancy floss and I'm probably just going to end up doing and I think oh and maybe the maybe the house maybe I can't remember now you know shut up and talk about something else um yeah I'm not going to do the tree and the fancy floss I'm just going to try and get enough in here I'm going to do like the top of that top like I'm gonna have to do certain aspects first to make sure that it looks good if I run out so, yeah and then I'll just do the substitutions for the tree and whatever whatever else is supposed to be the the fanciness I don't have enough I'm a dork There you are. Okay. Also pulled the, ra the raccoon. It says number four. I think he's in the summer, the middle of summer. 
Yes. Summer. Oh, I love him. <laughs> okay, these flowers is what I worked on. Right in here, I did a center start, of course. And I worked on these flowers and stems. And when I do fancy flosses, oh, just in case anyone is wondering, the actual color of what the um, eagle is on is called Spirit of the Forest. This one is on Meadows. Again, 28 count Lugana, two over two. This one had called for 500 and stitched exactly 500. But those are so sweet. I love these flowers. Now, yes, I'm I'm stitching with the fancy floss. But when I do variegated flosses, I don't, unless I'm very specifically trying to get, um, like for my spring piece uh, last year, I wanted very much those, uh, there was a really highly variegated floss and I wanted the different sections of color to be very apparent. Uh, otherwise, I cut the hank wherever and then I fold one strand of floss over and stitch with that two over two. Um, because I don't like the striped effect. I don't like splotchy looking color. I do like variegated flosses. Um, I just use them in a different manner than a lot of other people. So mine does tend to look like one color if it's not highly variegated. And that is how I prefer it. I prefer it to be more of a, a shade than a color change, if that makes sense. And it depends on, it just, the, the project has to tell me what it wants to have. Okay. Okay, now it's just a matter of my last two planned stitching pieces. Okay, this last one is the Heaven and Earth Designs Stitch Along. I chose Merry Mushroom Picnic 2. There it is. They, I have the first three pages. They're releasing this in sections over in during like once a quarter. Let me carry on. This is an excerpt from the Merry Mushroom Village Picnic artwork. He's by Amy Stewart. And that is the section that I'm doing or the, the piece that I'm doing. Unfortunately, the stitch along sign up is closed. But for those of us who are in it, um, if we finish three pages by the end, four pages, three pages. I don't remember because my plan is to finish the whole thing. If you finish three or four pages by the end of the year, you get all 10 of the stitch along pieces. And if you stitch the whole thing by the end of the year, you get two free patterns. So of course that's my goal. I did a total of... 4,600 stitches in the last three weeks on this. Here's where I was before. I'm doing this on 25 count China Ada, two over one tenth stitch. And that is where we are now. You can see this the fairy light coming in. Um, it's pretty much filled in up to here. Solid. And obviously this is stitched in too, but I started coming down and filling in this way because I want to be able to move the Q-snap over and start filling in the other side. Because there's a lot of, uh, Jen and I had uh, a little like back and forth, not really competition, but like I had so much fun doing it. She wanted to do it too, but we, um, we did... Let's see how, how many, who can get how, the most zeros <laughs> uh, as far as uh, finishing pieces. She's stitching in hand. So, and, and I'm not saying that she didn't deserve this, but I thought of it like halfway through my stitching session, but she kicked my butt. <laughs> but she's stitching it in hand so she could come over and get all these ninja stitches that are over here because there was definitely like a lot of onesies and twosies over here that I could have 
finished and gotten zeros, but I can't reach it. And I'm not moving, I'm not moving the Q snap in order to get just a bunch of ones and twos and then having to move it again. I'm just, I, that's just, I'm just too lazy to do that. But once I get about here filled in, then I can move it and see the rest of the piece. But it's looking, I, it's looking so good. I, I, this will be my first like, hey, finish if I get this done this year, which is kind of sad, but <coughs> the whole piece, no, just kidding. The first three pages that the I have of the pattern is like 23,000 stitches. I have 8,753 stitches, 33 stitches done for a total of 38.08% of that section. That will change once we get the next release and I export the progress and put it back in. All right. Anything else I want to say about that? I don't think so. But I think that covers it. Lord. Okay. For the last, my pinnacle, I am not going to be able to show you the whole thing because I didn't sit in my rolly chair to be able to back up. I'm just, no, I'm just in my chair. <laughs> but if you really want to see like the whole thing with in all its glory, go to my last video and then come back to see the inside progress. Uh, so here's where I was. Oh, let me tell you about the piece. This is Dragons of the Sabbat. Artwork is by Ann Stokes. Brain fart. Charted by Pain Free Crafts. Gotta find it. There it is. Look up. This is 755 by 800 stitches wide. So basically, basically a super size piece. I got all of the outside black done. I am now working my goal this year. Sorry. Is to get the black around where the dragons are completed. And then what will happen the year 2025 is I will finish the inside, inside black, where all the sigils and stuff are. That's kind of where that's evolved. So I have stitched in the last three weeks 3,269 stitches. Uh, my goal every week is 1,000. Oh, my goal every week on the Heaven and Earth design is 1,200. So uh, the dragons, yeah. Uh, and I stitched... Oh, yeah, 3,269. I don't remember exactly what I had done last time when I first, when I started this. So you'll have to take this before picture and use your imagination on what I have finished off now. But now I have a total in the whole piece of 163,926 stitches out of about 604,000. For a total of 27.14%. Complete. And there's where I've gotten to on the inside so far. I love it. I love the negatives that you can see the dragons now. That's so exciting. This is actually, like, this little section is done. I don't, it's a very, like, hard cutoff. I'm not sure what's going on behind it there. So, I think mostly I worked on this thing here and came back and did stuff around here. <laughs> but I'll be moving down this way. So this is Yule. I don't remember which one this one is. Maybe Beltane? That might be the, that might be here. Anyway. So pretty and exciting. It's kind of weird just working on this once a week now, but it's working. It's working for me because definitely by the end of the 
end of the thousand I'm like I'm ready for color again <laughs> I think that covers all of my stitching from last time y'all did I show I cannot I cannot for the life of me remember nor did I bother looking if I have shown you some of these pictures pictures patterns I don't think so because uh it was like a cough at the end of February you know end of January okay I had to go check and see what I had actually shown you <laughs> from last time uh so acquisitions gifty things awesomeness I won I was one of the winners of Suki's giveaway from her video last time um luthien art shop and she teamed up for um her like her big giveaway thing and i was a lucky winner of one of their charts um cancel now i put this in markup so we'll see if i can show you this what i want to show you but i picked love potion laboratory And Suki has this too. And we're both kind of, this will go into next year. I'll talk about next year towards, you know, later because it's only February. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this, I think, is the mock-up provided by Meltzum, who's Luthien Art. Can I zoom? Yes, I can make that bigger, but not really. Okay. So, yeah, you can't really... That's not a great way to see, but isn't that gorgeous? Obviously I am not deterred by dark colors just because I've been stitching black for ever and ever now, amen. <laughs> but I just think that is, oh, it's so, so pretty. So thank you, Meltem, again for, oh, hi, I'm orange. Okay, purples, blues, cool colors. Cool colors makes the orange go, woo. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Suki and Meltzum, for your generosity with that. Uh, very, very much appreciated. I have also... I need to put that back before I forget, and then I lose it, and then it's sad. Received. Did I receive? Did I get? I think I got. Excuse me. I showed you all those okay i think i had talked to my a couple of this has been quite a few videos i think ago um oh does he put a video up finally <laughs> um i had gotten some um patterns from seventh heaven on etsy and one of them was not quite up to snuff so i messaged the seller susan and just let her know, you know, hey, something's kind of a little wonky with this particular image. Just wanted to let you know about it, you know, in case other people see it and, you know, whatever. And she messaged me back and we talked a little bit and she offered to replace it. Um, and to and she offered a second chart for, for my troubles, which she absolutely did not need to do. But I was, I was like, hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much. So fantastic customer service. Um, and definitely highly recommend her, her shop. Now you need to be okay with AI images. Um, that is not a debate I'm willing to host on this channel. So please don't come at me in the comments. I will delete them. Um, we can all make our own opinions and we can all be adults about showing those opinions so you are welcome to voice your opinion do so in a courteous manner or i will i will delete it and i will probably block you because i don't need that crap in my life anyway <laughs> um so she so i picked it was very hard i it took me like two weeks to decide what i actually wanted to 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 pick but um i got surfs up not the picture i wanted which is it's a wave. I'm going to turn orange again, guys. 
but look at that. That's the mock-up, guys. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. Now, I know some of her artwork she does just license straight up. Um, another she, she creates herself. So, ugh. Those colors, I'm I'm a water baby. You would think that was my elemental sign, but it's not. <laughs> uh, and then I also picked pink flamingo. Carly, I was very happy to see I'm not the only one who struggles with the buttons on PK. <laughs> pink flamingo, it's like a stained glass piece. Love it. Not usually a pink girl, but lately pink has been kind of a thing for me. So I don't know when I'm going to start those. I have no clue. That's okay. Uh, and then How on Earth Designs announced the retirement of one of their artists. More than more than it was like three, I think, that were retiring. And. Uh, yeah, one of them was like one of my favorites that I've had to like wish listed for oh, forever and just hadn't picked them. I have one, I have one of them already, Hobbs one. So I got the three that I've been wanting to get. This is Dark Dark Zurian, I think is how you pronounce it. Zurian? Desurian? Not sure. These are by. I don't want to butcher his name. Hang on. Cerulio Cabral? I think is how you say it. Yeah. I thought this would be kind of cool as a companion piece to um, Malaganos. Different artists, but kind of the same theme of dragon on rock with sky. <laughs> and this one is called Drakerfly. I may crop this a little bit. I may not. I don't know. We'll decide. I'll decide when I get there. Because I definitely think it would be fine, you know, cropping off quite a bit of sky left and, and up. But I don't know. We'll see. We will see. And this one is Aragon Max Colors. I think it was named something else, like Dragon and His Boy or something like that in um, Heaven and Earth Designs. But... There was one more that I'm, I kind of wish I would have gotten, but I was supposed to be on a spending freeze and it's not working. But yeah, gorgeous. And then, and then, I was watching So Fly's Unique Boutique. She had mentioned me uh, in a video, but then the video went away. But then she mentioned then, then she messaged me and anyways I, I was watching her video <laughs> and she mentioned a shop on Etsy wink and blink and an odd I will put that here I will link her down below because I had some I had to jump through some hoops to find this thing because I was not spelling it correctly and because <clears throat> she showed this cauldron on her channel and I was like I love that style holy crap and I went and looked and um, looked at the about information and she does either create the artwork herself or purchase the license to use that artwork and and by creating the artwork herself like I don't know what that means but she makes the artwork herself and then when I was looking at the descriptions I noticed that she said she needs pattern testers I need more projects like I need a hole in the head. However, do you know, you know how sometimes you're just like your gut tells you like you're called to do something. That's what this was like. Like I felt very called by when Tammy was talking about her in the video and the pattern. And then I went and looked on the shop. Something was just pulling at me. So I messaged her. I sent her an email and said, tell me more. What are your requirements? Do you have a timeline? You know, what do you need for a pattern tester? She said, uh, have two hands <laughs> and stitch. Don't take more than 10 years. I'm like, that's some pretty loose requirements. Okay. 
And she was like, just tell me what you like. And I will, you know, she's like, I, I do ask see you post on social media. Hi, this is my YouTube. <laughs> uh, I will. And I told her I, I will make an effort to when I'm at least at least working on hers to post on Instagram. I said, I will not be able to start immediately. I have some other ob obligations, but I'm going to slot her in after this next test stitch is done, which is in like six weeks. So I have fabric on the way. I gave her a list of, because I mean, her style is like speaks to my soul. So I was like, I am not, ex I was, I, I had no expectations. I was like, I don't know if you like have a preference for what needs to be stitched. Um, but here's my favorites of yours. Surprise me. Pick, pick one, surprise me. She sent me three. It's going to take me like 10 years to stitch these three. But no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I have, I have plans on how to, how to fit this in. So this is called Misty Castle on a Lake. This is going to be a little hard to show because it's, it does have like a lot of 3865. I am not bothered by white stitches. I mean, yes, they're, they can be hard to see, but that's neither here nor there, but isn't that, and that's the mock-up. That's so gorgeous. <laughs> it is, I don't think she has, she has, she sent me three different files. One was the cover photo with instructions. One was a, like a triple, like three different like three different styles of colors for the symbols. If you wanted to do like a reg, like you prefer working with a color pattern, and then one what is PK compatible? But they don't, they didn't layer, so I don't think I can look at the PDF information easily. No, I don't remember what the dimensions are because I don't. Because I'm in the other PDF. Anyway. For something like almost 600 by 400 ish something for that one. That's the only one that I really kind of have a in my head for. This one is called Proof That Pink Is Badass. Again, very like feeling that maybe it's the spring thing. Maybe I'm I'm feeling spring a lot more and pastel colors are kind of it for me right now. Pink dragon with roses. I love it. Love it. Probably pretty close to the, I think it's a little smaller than the castle one. And then this one is a big boy. And it was very sweet. She warned me that he's a big one. And he's, I think he's like maybe 600 stitches wide. I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> No, it is big. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It is big, uh, but definitely not the biggest that I have been tackling. Um, this is called Tarn Black Dragon. She does have a mini ver She does have mini versions of some of her patterns. Uh, Taryn is one of them, but I got the, the regular, the regular size. And I don't think I'm going to start him first, but look at that. Ah, oh. She there's um she said the inspiration for this came from a book series that she has read. I don't remember what she did. She has a, a YouTube channel. My life is a whip. Um so if you're interested in, in some of her works and to see updates and things like that, you can go check out her channel. Fee is her name. Uh but yeah. How cool is he? Arr. There's a lot of black. Not a lot, a lot of black. Obviously, dragons is a lot more. But since I have, since I have dragons already going, I decided that I would do the castle first. So I do have fabric. No, I will be ordering fabric from hopefully the new seller. I actually, actually placed an order for my usual guy, and then I canceled it. And I guess AliExpress, the seller has to approve the cancellation. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not, which, come on, dude. It's, I canceled less than six hours after I ordered it. I'm sorry. Is that all I wanted to show you? I think that was it. Yes. 
and I think, did I talk about, I scanned in the pattern for patterns for the eagle and the raccoon into Pattern Keeper, and I kind of like working on them like that. Um, I definitely recommend scanning in and not taking a picture because it has to be extremely flat in order for the symbols to line up properly so that you're not going, what square does that belong to? I don't know. Okay, that was the the acquisitions, yes? Yes, I have a little bit of giftiness. My mother-in-law stopped by today, obviously, to pick up the son. And her sister had given her, or a woman had given her, I don't know, she acquired uh, a bunch of cross-stitching stuff from a woman who has sadly passed away. And she doesn't cross-stitch anymore. She's like, my eyes can't handle it. I thought you might like it. I was like, what has come my way? Crinkle alert. Mm, that's heavy and I had to bend over for it. Sorry, running into you. Okay. I'm not going to show you all of it. Some of it's just like tools. Like I got some some fake nerds. I don't know if... We'll see. These don't feel like nerge brand like they're pretty they're kind of flimsy as far as the the tension goes so we'll see if they if they work we will see i don't know but there is two of the smaller sizes one of the middle in size uh a couple of a couple of, of q snaps Ooh, that i can i think looks like an 8x8 and 11 by 11 so I'll break those down and make my preferred 8x11s. Uh, mounting board. I will be honest though, adhesive and needlework make me nervous together. Maybe something that I was like, meh, about. I would, I would mount that way. Uh, a magnet board and a really old DMC thread card. Guys, take a look Look at this. This is from, when was this done? Does this have a year? It does not. That's too bad. Oh, man. Okay, this is when, this is when flower, thread, flower thread from DMC was new. So that should, um, actual samples of all 360 solid colors <laughs> so but I'm like this is before they actually like had the if you've seen the card now they actually wrap around but I was very amused by that I don't know what year it's from but I bet you some of my threads are from these dye lots <laughs> uh, let's see a couple of pattern books a, a needle point canvas with the yarn tiger kind of see that there you go hasn't been started but it's been it's been kitted like uh the the yarn is on a organizer it's got the instructions so i don't know we'll see uh, a diamond painting that i think she had gotten for christmas and never started so that i just not for my eyes it's like cross stitch but okay add it to the stash i guess a prop thing, uh, a couple of tubes of 14 count Ada, which is nice because I had uh, used up all of my bigger, my bigger pieces, so I might be able to put some more Stitch Rovia pieces on some fabric because I do like hers on 14 count. Um, I think you know 16 or even 18 count would be fine, um, but I, I think they look nice with the. I mean, she designed them well to, for 14 count. Hang on. Okay. Uh, a couple of like leaflet booklets from Leisure Arts. This one's Cats Galore. It's got 66 designs. But, oops, sorry, pattern. There's a whole bunch of kitty patterns in there. Um, this one, cross stitch for beginners. That'll probably end up on a on a giveaway table, to be honest. There's some cute little... Actually, I kind of like that Christmas sampler. Might do that one. And Santa dancing. Another key cat. 
That one's actually kind of cute. So, but yeah. Now, there, there, the the gem of of the of the 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 bag to me. Uh, this is a Pegasus publication designed by Phyllis Barry Wooten. Spirit of the Indians. Tells you how dated this is. When is this from? 1991. I like that one. I like that one. Yeah. But then there's this. I'm not going to read that. I'm not going to put it up there long enough for you to read that. But it is Chief Seattle's testimony in 1854 is what that is. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. No way would I do all of those backstitchy words. Until I found this in the thing. Y'all, the background's pretty much done. There's a buffalo bison a bison left to finish here and then the words and i'm assuming that the woman who had the stash is the one who did this and i feel like i feel like i should do it i mean honestly i don't know what do you think guys it would be nice just to have the the background because it's just that bison needs to be finished and this bottom border and that's it as far as the picture goes i don't have to put the words do i should i give me your opinions <laughs> because i'm just like i don't know i'm tickled pink that there is a that there's an unfinished project in this that i can that i could finish i might even have floss old enough to match that <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, that'll be added to the, the pile. Not, maybe not this year. I have some time to think, sorry, I keep smacking the phone. Um, not this year, but I will add it to the pile at some point. And sit back again. Okay. That is it as far as current progress. Acquisitions. Then next is drawing. Drawing for the next week. Well, actually, I can show you. Not really show you, but I will tell you. I already showed you one. I showed you the raccoon that I, fin that I worked on. I also pulled the bee kit from Learn a Lane from Gecko Rouge. The Blue Morpho Butterfly, that's a Mill Hill kit, and Summertime Fairy, that is one of the patterns by Visa. Visa. I will, I gotta add up how much those are, and I will not count throwing stuff. I will not count the raccoon stitches since it was on last week, but we will pull another we'll do 7,000. Not 7,000. We'll do 4,000 because half a week or half, one week is typically 3,000, but I'm actually, I'm going to have an extra day. Plus I'm still recovering. So I'm kind of stitching more than, uh, than I would normally. So because I can't work yet. I cannot sit at the, if I can't sit forward long enough to record a hour and a half video, there's no way I can sit and sew, which kind of sucks. But, uh, all right. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to holler up, down up at my spawn, have him help me switch out stuff. My husband's going to be home soon. So it may be a while, my time before I come back and finish this. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm kind of a dingbat. Have to uh, actually draw projects in order to pull projects to show you. <laughs> um, 
I did my math. Okay, we've got just under, just over 3,000 to pull. 2,000. I don't, whatever. I don't know. I'm pulling projects. Oh, ow. Okay. Starting again with three new starts and one whip. So first one, and I had told you the other ones that I pulled. Ooh, a Christmas ornament. Oh, Pierre Noel. It's 800. Another Christmas ornament, one of the Dimensions kits, the Polar Bear for 600. Let's we'll see if we actually get to a whip. Don't eat a Christmas ornament. Don't eat a Christmas ornament. Sweet. Golden Eyed Fairy. That's one of my full coverage. Oh, man down. Mm. One of my full coverage ones. Golden Eyed Fairy at 500. And probably one more. Maybe two. Yeah, okay. In the Garden Mystery Sow by the Cross Stitch Studio for 300. That's 3,600. We'll do one more. One more. Don't be a Christmas warner. Ooh, of course. Songs Under the Cherry Tree. This is another full coverage. Uh, uh, oh, it's Thunder by the Light. There we go. Is that 500? No, that's 700. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's 4,300. Plenty for this coming week. Okay. And then... The thing that is going to be replacing the wedding favors is this, uh, is the uh, bluebird on thorn branch. I'll, I'll show you that too. So, okay, now we'll switch. Okay, the child has helped me put stuff away and pull stuff. He was very grumbly about it. And he broke Mr. Bones. Look at this. Poor Mr. Bones' arm is broke off. Right there. <sighs> Mr. Bones is sad. <laughs> okay. He didn't mean to. But now Mr. Bones is armless. All right. In no particular order, I'm going to do the not pattern keepers ones first. Okay. So, first Christmas ornament is Pierre Noel out of. I'm pretty sure of this book somewhere. Yep, there it is. Okay. This is 100 crustus ornaments, Christmas ornaments from somewhere, from something. Who did this? I don't know. I've never bothered looking. Mm -hmm. Any, anywho. And then I closed it because that was the smart way to do that. Elera, good job. Okay, Pierre Noel by, doesn't even say. These are uncredited things. <sighs> oh, can you see? That one. I don't know how many stitches is he getting. He's, um, he's getting 800, so... Mm, that's a possible finish, possibly. We'll see. I'm saying a maybe on that one. What are you doing? Where are we going? Uh, another, the other Christmas ornament was the Dimensions Polar Bear. That one is getting 600. Not going to be a finish because these are stitch intense. The Polar Bear. Take care. Those are, I don't know, I'm hoping. Uh, I gotta convert this thread still, but that's okay. Uh, I'm hoping I can scan the pattern and get it in a markup, because that will be oh so much easier to do, I think. I hope. Okay. Uh, I get to start the B by 
sorry, lots of crinkles. I have a card in the way. And let's just take this out so there's not not glare. The Bee, Bee by Lorna Lane. Gecko Rouge is my most recent purchase from them. No, just kidding. It is not. I lied. This is my next last. The other one's not on me to do for this year, which I got it. Did I get it in? Have I gotten it? Yes, I got it. I think I might have even shown it to you. Do, do, do. All right. So there's that one. That one is going to get 600. Decent start. I'll take it. Another start. Why did I put these cards in front? Oh, past me sucks. Past me did not organize the floss for this kit. And it's a mill hill. We all know how fun mill hills are to organize. Okay, if you've never done a mill hill, it's like uh, let me let me stop making all the noise. It's like how Dimensions kits used to come, only kind of worse. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta put that on a floss organizer. My ice castle I did, I had to bust out the uh, DMC, come to the button, I had to bust out the DMC uh, card because it was like 12 shades of blue. Blue Morpho Butterfly, this is their Buttons and Beads collection, spring series from some year, a year, that I cannot find. It's fine. Everything's fine. And I think that's it for pictures that I can just show you. Okay. The, okay. The one that is going to replace the wedding favors is not that far up. I deleted some of my uh, like finished projects off of Pattern Keeper, and when it shifted, like I'm my eyes are not seeing where stuff is anymore. Quickly, there it is. Okay, this is by Crystal Root. Uh, her shop on Etsy is called Root Made, and this is called Bluebird on Thorn Branch. I am doing this over two on, this is a piece of fabric from Dye Stitch Love. It was the 2015 Fabric of the Month in Lilith. It is a 32 count linen. I don't know, I don't really know yet which way I'm going to orient it. it kind of sucks that I'm not going to be able to surge these pieces now. But that is the piece. It's less than 6,000 stitches, so I'm hoping to get it done in about six weeks. And I will provide her with a pretty photo for her Etsy store. Um, this pattern was provided to me by her in exchange for the pretty photos. And so that's that. Okay. Songs Under the Cherry Tree. This is a piece, I believe, by Chris Ortega. It is a Heaven and Earth Designs piece. Had her for a while, so she's going to be up here. Further, there she is. Yes, Chris Ortega. Um, this is the mini, Songs Under the Cherry Tree. She is 232 by 325. She has 88 colors. And here is the mock-up. Oh. Gorgeous. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put all of ooh, 700, so probably a bunch of probably on end up be a bunch of browns. That's okay. Unless I decide to start in the middle. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. None of these are surged. That stinks. 
This is being done on kind of thick and soft. I don't remember what fabric this is. Maybe a it's either 25 or 28 count. I will be doing this probably full cross for the detail. But I mean it's just not gonna be huge. Ta -da. And then whatever margin I, I did, that'll be even smaller there, so okay. I feel like I'm dragging this out. Sorry. All right, Golden Eyed Fairy. She was purchased. Yeah, real close to that one. This is also Heaven Earth Designs. This is a piece by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. This is Mini Golden Eyed Dragonling. She is 260 by 325, and again, 88 colors. And that's what she's gonna look like. Oh, look at those eyes. Ah, I'm so, mm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, there, I have a ton of her Faces of Fairy Dragonling pieces in my wish list. This is 28 count. I'm going to probably do her one over one as well. I don't know. I might do her. I might do her 10 stitch. No, I'll probably do, do her one over one. We'll see. We'll see what mood I'm in when I start her. She is only getting 500. Okay. Then I also pulled the Mystery Sal from Cross Stitch Studio from last year. Did I put the whole thing in here? That would have been the smart thing to do. Oh, there it is. I, I don't I don't know if I have to put in the progress still of what I have. But that's the finished piece. I have the first two pages, two and a half pages done. I'll show you where I'm at on that one. Apparently I left the needle in. Some thread. Oh. I'm in the middle of working on a color. Okay, that was smart. So we'll work on filling the rest of this page in. It's going to get Ooh, 300 stitches. I don't think, oh, that should, hopefully that will finish that page. We're really close to it. So. Get a little bit more work on that one. And then I had pulled this one last time out. This is uh, also a work in progress. This is Summertime Fairy by V. Saw. She's 400 and four, 480 by 480. I really think I'm going to stick her in um, mark, 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 mark up, not mock up, mark up, and see if that shows her better. I can only show you the mock-up on the PDF. There. I'm just, I'm in this background up here. Kind of looks a little weird right now. Show you that on that one. My husband just got home, if you can hear. Hear the noise in the background. So I'll just, I don't know, I'll pick a color and we'll see how, we'll see how it works in markup. If it works better, then I'll be able to fill in a little bit better up up in here so all right I'm gonna stop this again say hello to my husband probably finish recording when he's gone to bed <laughs> okay he's gone to bed poor man is stressed I don't think either of us really appreciated how much time I would have to take off after the surgery uh, and filming tonight has definitely shown me that I am not ready to go back to work yet. Um, so 
uh, my last video. Oh, and I'm I'm not going to be able to do the board tonight, guys. My my other kiddo, he's uh, he's already back upstairs, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and uh, have him hold it while I I just no. We'll 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 do a giant cross off when I feel better. <laughs> um, but I did have a few people ask in my last video what the heck was the hairy thing hanging on the the wall. So. Uh, if taxidermy bothers you, you may want to look away for a few seconds, but, um, this, this is Buffalo Bill. Say hi, Bill. Uh, he uh, has a place of honor in our home, um, because my father-in-law, uh, dispatched him for feeding us for about five years. So he, he did not go to waste. He is not a trophy. He's a trophy, but... Uh, in the sense of, of he fed us for a long time. Um, don't worry, he, he revenges as much as possible whenever I clean or I sit up or stand up awkwardly from a chair. He has bonked my head I don't know how many times. So, that's Bill. Um, let's see. Life. So yeah, if you are only here for stitching, thank you so, so much for... I don't even know how long this is now because I've had to stop and start it a few times. Um, probably close to two hours at least. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me and um, hope you've got a lot of stitching in and I will see you hopefully in about a week. Like I said, I'm, I'm planning on going ahead and, and getting back to the, the regularly scheduled update um, next week and then and for the for the giveaway. If you did not watch my last video, go back and watch it if you're interested in that. Um, so, yeah, head surgery. <laughs> uh, that's, that's been, the last three weeks has been full of prep for that and, uh, the aftermath. Um, so that's, that's what I'll talk about, I guess. Um, yeah, it was, uh, the surgery went well. I, my, my, okay, so I had a cold and I had to call anesthesiology, make sure that I was still cleared to actually have the surgery. They asked me a bunch of questions and determined that it was basically just, yeah, it was just sinuses and a cold. Uh, since I wasn't coughing with that cold, they said I was safe to still go under for the anesthesia. Uh, what that equaled afterwards was that I was terrified to sneeze. Holy cow. That I, I managed to not do it. I, ha I hadn't sneezed for a week. <laughs> And then one like snuck up on me and luckily I, I didn't, it didn't hurt. Um, but the night before surgery, day before surgery, day before surgery, the little guy ended up with fever and coughing and hacking and staying home from school. So my husband had to stay home the day of my surgery to be with him. My oldest kiddo ended up being the one taking me to the surgery. That was a little unexpected. Um, I wasn't like upset or anything. It, it is what it is. And we thought it would be silly for them, for the kiddo to come and watch a sick kid and risk getting sick and taking it to everyone else. So we just had my husband stay at home with him. Uh, that kind of made it where he was not the one informed of my aftercare and what that would look like by the surgeons. And what they really kind of neglect to tell you, at least to tell me, and sort of emphasize was that even though this is a very common surgery, uh, it's still a major surgery. And I was not really prepared for, <laughs> for the aftermath. Um, the first night was extremely hard. Um, I, I have an allergy to an opiate, like anaphylactic will die allergy. That does not necessarily make you allergic to every other opiate out there. However, I am allergic to tramadol, which is a derivative of, um, of opiates. Um, Vicodin makes me so sick. The last time I had it, I vomited for like six hours and ended up back in the hospital to rehydrate me. So I'm not really allergic to it, but I'm definitely, the side effects are like very pronounced in me. So we tend to opt not to do any kind of 
prescribed opiates outside of the hospital. So I had Tylenol to get me through. Um, which, frankly, the cert, like the incision pain, I could handle. They, and I'm not trying to tell you any of this to, like, scare you if you have never had this kind of, like, it was a laparoscopy. If you've never had this kind of surgery, get it if you need it. Because it's, I mean, you know, it's short-term, uh, short-term, I don't know, inconvenience for, you know, much, much better uh, life, um, quality of life afterwards. But that being said, I really feel like they should have prepared me more than they did for the pain afterwards of, so they inflict, if you're not familiar with lap laparoscopic surgery, they make an incision at the belly button where the tool goes into where the, the, the robotic arms and stuff, at least one of them, <clears throat> Obviously, I'm no expert. Um, but then there are three other incisions. One right at the sternum, one in the about mid rib cage, and then one down at the lower rib cage, where the rest of the instruments and things go through, and the extraction is done through your belly. The They have to inflate you with the CO2 <clears throat> gas in order to see said organs they can't get all of that out it's kind of impossible it just doesn't happen hang on somebody's coming downstairs okay son wanted to ask me questions and visit and things uh what was i saying uh oh but they so they blow you up your abdominal cavity with co2 in order to see but they don't necessarily can get it all out and it's in your abdominal cavity. It's not like you can just burp it out or fart it out. That That's not how that works. Like maybe if your intestines absorb some of it, it'll actually go out that way or your stomach. I felt like a human level because if I shifted, I could get the bubble to move. But where it wanted to settle was at the bottom of my rib cage, where my incisions were, where all the work had been done and I couldn't breathe. Oh, that was, I would rather give birth again, naturally, three times, than have that pain. But again, I can only manage it with Tylenol, so maybe it's not that bad for other people, but holy cow, holy cow, that, that was uh, about 12 hours of pain that I don't really want to think about anymore. <laughs> um... And, you know, I had to get help, like, laying down and getting up for the first day. And then I was, I could kind of do it on my own. But um, my husband had to go back to work, like, the next day. So it was rough. It was a rough weekend. <laughs> but I made it through. I made it through. I've, I And I, I was making, like, steady progress as far as, like, oh, I feel better. Oh, I feel even better. Until Thursday. This past Thursday. And now I feel like I've sort of plateaued and like I said man this and I don't know maybe it's because the incisions are like healing and I don't have that pain going on that I can feel the other pain that's still there I go for my follow-up on Tuesday so I will see what they say <sighs> I'm super glued back together in the meantime <laughs> Uh, I had some sort of allergic reaction to, like, the anesthetic or something on my torso. I'm allergic to whatever adhesive they use to, like, tape the stuff. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. But, uh, you know what? They assure me I'll feel better once I'm all healed. <laughs> um, I felt like I had a lot more to say, but that's that's really been... I slept a lot. Oh man, I slept a lot. I would sleep like 12 hours and then half, I would get up for like an hour and a half and then I would sleep for another four hours and then I would get up for like five hours and then I would do it all again. I finally didn't need a nap like Wednesday. Uh, that was exciting. But I was still sleeping like 12 hours. I'm down to like nine or ten. <laughs> oh man. So, but I am, I'm glad I had it done. Um, Hopefully everything heals 
heals finishes healing up all right i don't have to worry about more pain uh what else anything else little guy has his birthday today we're gonna celebrate on monday because he's off school for president's day here in the united states and the husband is off so he's got a lot still to do so he's like i don't know you tell me what time people are coming and i'll show up <laughs> yeah because i'm i'm capable of planning a party right now so anywho what there was something i was else i was going to talk about but I hope you guys are doing all right. That's my hope. Getting a lot of stitching done, making sure you're taking care of yourselves. I'm not ready to talk about the elephant, the other elephant in the room, which is my diagnosis. But what I will talk about a little bit is, is, is the therapy associated with mental illness, mental problems, mental anguish, anything like that that if you have issues and you have tried a therapist in the past or a counselor or, or whatnot and did not have success and got discouraged and quit the therapist and said never again I, I totally understand where you're coming from because I have done that five or six times and I thought you know what I'm going to give it one more try This was even before my diagnosis. This was back when I was like, uh, something's got to give. And I got a recommendation from from my my uh, my current GP. And the place that, like the first meeting with my therapist was very much a look. If I'm not a good fit for you, let me know. You're not going to hurt my feelings will find somebody who's a good fit for you because this is about you. This is about your healing, not me. Okay. Made that very clear from the get go. I'm like the, okay, that's, that's a good sign. And has had really like good, solid, like, okay, this is what we're you know, what do you want to, how are you doing? What do you want to talk about? What is the direction you want to go? What, what would you like to get out of this? What, you know, it was very much not just me talking, but a very much directed, okay, well, let's work on this particular aspect of things that you have felt like you've struggled with in the past. Um, and I feel like that has given me some tools that I didn't even realize I was utilizing until recently. And uh, it's been good, but it's taken me a long time, multiple tries to get here. So if you have had trouble in the past and, but are still suffering, are still trying to find a way to get the help that you need, keep trying. Don't give up. It is okay to quit because let's face it, therapists are people. Therapists are human, and there is a, 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 a spectrum of skills within that set. And you'll have, just like you have terrible mechanics and great mechanics and terrible painters and, and great painters, <coughs> excuse me, you have horrible teachers and fantastic teachers. The same goes with therapists. You, you've got really terrible ones. You've got phenomenal ones. You've got ones that specialize in one thing, but maybe not another. So maybe aren't a good fit for one thing, but are a great fit for another. Just keep trying. Don't give up. If you've got one that you're comfortable saying, look, I appreciate you're trying to help, but I'm just not feeling a good connection here. If they're in a group, Ask if you can get connected with someone else in the same group. If you're not comfortable telling that to your therapist, look up and see who the management of, of that practice or whatever it is. And call and talk to them and be like, look, what's your policy? Can I try and get a better fit? I'm just not feeling it with this one. 
You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be that they're terrible at it. It's just that maybe you don't have quite that connection. You're not comfortable enough with that person to be able to open up like you need to in order to get that help. Um, it's so, so important because, well, I can offer my inbox to, to everyone and say, you know, if you need a shoulder, need to talk, I, absolutely yes, but I'm not a therapist. <laughs> Um, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. All I can do is encourage you to to get keep trying get the get the right help get get some help um, You know, I, I can help hopefully make you n not feel completely alone, you know, that's why I talk about this stuff But ultimately it's got to be where you're paired with a person who professionally can actually offer you the tools to cope, to offer you the tools to explore what it is and is that you are dealing with. Um, so, so yeah, don't, even the worst experiences are not indicative of all the experiences. There are good therapists and people who are uniquely who will uniquely click with you. So just, I encourage you to pick up a phone, call your family doctor, call your therapy place, and and try to get a better fit, get a fit. Um, if you've never, if you've never even had a therapist before and you're just scared to even try or know where to start, start with your family doctor. Let them know, hey, look, kind of feeling like I need somebody to talk to. I don't know where to start they will point you in a direction. Maybe not the right direction at first if it's not a good fit, but they will point you in a direction to at least get you started. That is my public service announcement for the day. <laughs> um, be well, my friends, and take care of yourselves. Like I said, it's life is too short and too precious to waste it stressing and not healing it's it's I, I want I want everyone to be as happy as they can be and th and that includes me even though some days I still struggle with imposter syndrome or not feeling good enough or or whatnot and there it's getting better and that's that's what matters steps forward even though tiny are still steps forward so all right i'm gonna get off my soapbox i have no idea how long this video is i love you all and i will see you in the next video take care guys bye